Hello everybody. Thank you for tuning into the Forgotten Film Channel. Today's Forgotten Film star is Benny Rubin. Benny Rubin was born on February the 2nd, 1899 in Boston, Massachusetts. He got his start in the entertainment industry performing in vaudeville. He had a comedy routine called English and what he did was imitate the different dialects, the different accents of people throughout the United States. It was insanely popular. The crowd absolutely loved him. He was a standing room only act. By 1927, he found himself in Hollywood. He was married. His wife's name was Mary O'Brien. They had one child together and divorced in 1934. In 1929, he made his big screen debut in the movie Naughty Baby. It proved to be a hit, and because of his ability to master all these different dialects and accents, Benny Rubin became a favorite amongst producers, directors, and audiences. He worked steadily in the film industry. He also did radio acts. In 1949, he had two pages of his jokes published in the book. Stop me if you've heard this one. He appeared on television as well starting in the 1950s. He was a regular face on multiple sitcoms, variety, and talk shows. And in 1972, he published his autobiography. It was entitled, uh, Come Backstage With Me. He made his final on-screen appearance in 1979, and that was the year of his retirement. He lived out the rest of his years quietly in Los Angeles, passing away on October the 15th, 1986, at the age of 87. During his 50-plus year career in the entertainment industry, Benny Rubin performed his comedy routine in vaudeville uh, countless times. He was also in 132 movies, made 186 appearances on 111 different television shows and voiced three cartoon characters. What I have for you today on the Forgotten Film Channel is the 1930 a race car exploitation classic, Hot Curves. Its runtime is just a little bit over an hour long, so I hope that you enjoy it. And I want to thank you for tuning into the Forgotten Film Channel. Have a great day. Hopefully tomorrow will be even better. I'm sorry, buddy. Kind of got away from him. Dolan don't look much like his father, does he, man? I'll say he doesn't. And if he stays out there much longer, he'll cripple my whole team. What's on the old bill now? Come on, boy. Put it in there now. Come on. Look out. Come on, Father Come on, Dolan. 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 Say, Dolan, just what's the idea? I realize I'm a little bit wild, Mr. McClure. A little I... bit wild. 
Well, get over there and practice control before you put the whole team in the hospital. Yes, sir. He'll be all right, Mac. Well, he'd better be. Hey, Shorty. Want to catch a couple for me? Come on. All right, you ready, Shorty? wasn't so good. What I need is a little more speed. I have to get warmed up before I can show any real speed. I didn't know you were a girl. I wouldn't have pitched so hard. Honest, I wouldn't have. Well, they were pretty hot. Gee, it's all red and swollen. Are you sure there are no joints out of place? No, I don't think so. You're Jim Dolan, aren't you? Yeah. How'd you know? Oh, I have ways of finding those things out. What's your name? Elaine McGrew. McGrew? Any relation to the manager? Sure, he's my father. Uh-oh. I think you missed a couple of joints here. All right, you outfielders, get on your horses. All right, rubber arm, put something on it. And duck. arm. Put one through here. I want to see what Goldberg can do. Hey, stupid! Why don't you stop that ball? Well, if it'll come another ball, I'll, I'll, I'll stop it. This Goldberg's minor league record reads all right. But he doesn't look so hot to me. Maybe he's a little nervous. Well, I hope he gets over it. Yeah. So do I. <coughs> well, I stopped it, didn't I? He's terrible. And maybe I should have told you before, Max. But that's not the Goldberg you sent me after. What? Well, you see, the Phillies beat me to that Goldberg. So when I found this one... So I... this is not the Goldberg? Oh, you see, I... No, I don't see. Just who is this? Well, his name is Goldberg, too. He's a peanut butcher. A peanut butcher? Say, what's the idea? I sent you out for a Jewish baseball star, and you bring me back a peanut butcher. Hey, Goldberg. Come here. Yes, sir, Mr. McCross. I'll be there in a second. Do you mind if I take that ball a second? I want to see if I can strike that fella hop. Sure, go ahead. Thank you. Hey, wait a minute, McCormick. Hey, 
Hey, what's that for? That's a message to McGoyle. I'm going to smack it clear over to Chicago. Which way is that from here? Over that way a couple of hundred miles. Foul oh, but <laughs> Over that way is a foul ball anyway. All right, Mr. Kelly. Dish him up and let's see what you've got. I got that catcher. He's coming a finger. There it is, Slug. See it? <laughs> I usually kid him along that way by missing the first one. All right, they catch you. What this one? This is coming swiftly, fastly, and tenderly. There you slug, bitch. Hey, catcher, look out, here's coming one. <laughs> Say, I don't even know my own strength. <laughs> Are you still kidding him, Slug? <laughs> oh, shut up. Hey, buddy, you're pretty good. Say, what kind of a ball did you throw him? Meatball with sauce on top. <laughs> right, George, it sure was good. Well, I'll see you across, around. I mean, I'll meet you sometime. Mr. McGrew, I got your message. Did you go sending for me, please? Where'd you learn to pitch? Oh, oh that's nothing to why I'm pitching. I'm catching better as I'm pitching. Oh, you're catching better, are you? Oh, yes, sir. And that's nothing. I'm playing first base better as I'm catching or as I'm pitching. Oh, that's fine. Yes, <laughs> sir. Well, I guess we better let everybody else go and just keep you, eh? Oh, that's a nice compliment. <laughs> but I hate to put all them other fellows out of a job. That's the spirit, Goldberg. <laughs> now you go and rest a while. I'll try you out in the morning as a catcher. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, too. <laughs> oh, and the am Jim. Jim. I sure can pick him. Back in 27, when I win the World Series for Max, I'm up against one of the best pitchers in the business. Uh, I forget his name now. Nice boy. Says to me after the series is over, he says, Son, I've done the best you could. I ship them down to you, and they look to me like grapefruit. You smack them with that big wheel, they come back to me looking like marble. <laughs> What's the matter with you? You got something in your eyes? No. Something in your ears? <laughs> no. Who is really? Is there something wrong with your nose? No. It will be in a second if you don't keep quiet. <laughs> You're cute, baby. <laughs> be quiet, will you please? Go kid, go kid, go. <laughs> you sweet kid. Look, darling, I want you to be nice and quiet, you hear? Go kid, for heaven's sake. Will you please stop it? All right, nice is nice. <gasps> <laughs>
<laughs> Will you please be quiet? I'm going to slip now. And while I'm slipping, watch, no fly shall catch on me. Hello. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. You sure pitched a pretty game today, Dolan? Thanks, Mac. Well, I guess I'll see what my public's got to say. I beg your pardon, Mr. Dolan. Would you please autograph this for me? Sure. There you are. Oh, thanks a lot. That's all right. You know, it's kind of tough to be famous. People won't let you alone. You and Lindbergh. Well, I guess I got time to write my column for the world before dinner. Bye. I beg your pardon. I, I must have made a mistake. I must be in the wrong compartment. Well, just make yourself at home. Thank you, Mr. Dolan, but... Well, how did you know my name? Everybody knows you. Yeah, I guess they do. You a baseball fan? Sometimes. Sometimes? What do you mean by that? I mean, I never miss a game if I know you're going to pitch. No kidding. You know, I've always wanted to meet you. Funny, isn't it, how I just happened to blunder into your compartment by mistake. I'm glad you did. So am I. Now I can really say I know you. But, uh, there isn't any hurry. Oh, I'm so thrilled. You know, I think you and I are going to get along just fine. I know we are. Homely. I won't be here that long. When I signaled you to walk a duel today, I meant it. Why'd you pitch to him? I struck him out for you, didn't I? Well, that's not the point. With two men on bases and two out, the safe thing to do is to walk a dangerous hitter. I won the game, and I can't see where you got any squawk coming. Well, just the same, I'm finding you $100 for disobeying orders. Say, listen, Mac. And you better let well enough alone before I make it more. Troubling my big boy. Can you imagine a manager finding a pitcher for striking out O'Doul? He find you after you won the game for him? Yeah. He find me one hundred dollars. Can you beat that? Well, there's just one answer to that, darling. He's jealous of you. I'll bet you're right. Look, we're just going to forget all about it. We're not going to let any old crab spoil a perfectly good evening for us. How about it? I told you I'd found out O'Doul, didn't I? Well? I'll say you did, darling. But I'm awfully sorry about $100 fine. Ah, oh, forget it. 
It isn't a hundred dollars that worries me. It's the principle of the thing. I just heard my father talking to the coach. I do wish you'd listen to Dad. Hmm. I win all my games, don't I? Yes. And so did Conway last year, until he thought he was too good to listen. He isn't back this season. Hmm. Why compare me with that punk? Because I know what you're headed for. You once told me that when a ball player's at the top, he's got to watch his step. I watched you playing around, and it isn't that I'm jealous. I know you wouldn't be seriously interested in any other girl. It's just you and your future that I'm thinking of. If you really love me, you'll listen to me and take my advice. Has she gone yet, darling? Listen, I... If you'll just... Buck up, sweet. Tonight's going to be a big night. <coughs> oh, girl, I've come today to you to talk to you about something where well, you know how it is. In the spring, a young man's pants is falling upside down. And I have come to the conclusion that when a man is in law, he feels the call of the moose is coming to him. And Cookie, I can just wish you. I can wish you and me together in a little cottage by the sea. Maybe a little Brooklyn. That... Cookie! A man's heart is full of love. I. Oh. Cookie, why don't you behave in yourself? I'm talking to you. I got in my heart such a kind of thing. Now, no fooling. Let's... Cookie, please. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, you love for you. I knew it all the time. You made it with your mouth, the noise. Uh, you make me crazy. Now, listen, Cookie. Come. Oh, you cute devil, you. You keep this always to remind me of him, of me. <laughs> Ain't that nice? Didn't you have something to say to me? Yes, I did. But look, I, I'll tell you. I'll... <laughs> oh, cute knick knick knacks that you got there. Now, but no kidding, Cookie. Look in my eyes. And you'll realize that I'm loving you, that I care for you, that I would... I'm telling you, it's not sensible to talk to you. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, Cookie, the feeling what I'm feeling for you is such a beautiful feeling. It's a... Now, you got me mistaken. I didn't say anything. I only tell you that I'm liking you. And I'm good. I'm telling you, you're doing wrong now. You got the whole conversation mixed up. I'm only telling you that I'm like... <laughs> now, please, cook it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen! Oh, you, you jiggle, oh, you. Mm. I'm too much of a gentleman.
Come in. Grandma Dawn, how are you, dear? How are you, Betty? Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Oh, Jim didn't tell me you were coming. It's a surprise for him. Yeah, he'll be tickled and teased. Uh, but, but he isn't here now. Oh, but he'll be back soon, huh? Yeah, uh, uh, He's in Philadelphia. McGrew sent him to Philadelphia. Philadelphia? Uh, yes, uh, uh, You see, uh, Mr. McGrew wanted Jim to watch Dale at bat so he could know how to pitch to him in the World Series. Oh, I see. I knew it was something important, because he never forgets my birthday letter. No. Oh, gee, Mrs. Dolan, I hope you won't be angry on me. I did a terrible thing. He gave me a letter to mail, and I forgot to mail that letter. For you? All right. Well, maybe I got it, though. I got it. It ain't lost. Not, not, nothing like that. But... And I, and I just remembered I sent my clothes to the tailor this morning, and that letter is in the suit what's in the tailor shop. So I'll go and get it, and, and, and you make yourself comfortable while I'm gone, huh? Take off your hat and enjoy. Will you excuse me, won't you please? Yes, I'll be right away back. All right, Fanny. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. <laughs> Mr. Please, sir. Uh, Mr. Goldberg. I'm fine, thank you. Uh, where am I finding the public stenographer? The public? Oh, you mean the public stenographer? Why, yes, indeed. Right over there. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, here. I'm awfully sorry. Please, Father. Excuse me. Thank you. How do you do, Mr. Goldberg? <laughs> I do. Um, miss, could, could you typewrite a letter for me on the stenographer? Yes, I'd be very glad to. Thank you. Is that the best paper, what's uh, catching? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, say like this. Dear Grandmomsy, I hope what you're enjoying, your birthday. Ah, you, you make me feel so foolish. That girl's cuckoo for me. Yes. <laughs> oh, I got the letter, Mom. Look, here's the letter. Maybe you'd like to read it now, huh? Oh, thank you. All right, then I'll get you a chair. To make yourself a comfy, 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 comfy. There you you. <laughs> now, come on, cut it out, cut it out, cut it out, come on. Because we, we're going to have happy times. Come on, I'll blow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you see, little girl, you. Sure, Jim is a swell fella. Swellest fella what I ever met in my whole life. And you know, because he ain't here, that ain't going to spoil your birthday. Because I'm going to take you out for a birthday party. Huh? Oh, no. I couldn't do that. Oh, why? Oh. Check around an old lady like me. Oh, <laughs> what do you mean, old lady? You a little kitty, you? <laughs> <laughs> no. I ain't got no girl excepting you. You are my only sweetheart, and tonight you and me is going to make a whoopee. And you're sure I wouldn't be too much trouble? Listen, darling, didn't I just out told you you are my sweetheart? All right. 
like your darling boy. you're enjoying yourself. Do you know, Benny, this is the first time I've ever been in a cabaret? <laughs> <laughs> Not cabaret, darling. Case. <laughs> what a lovely wristwatch. Chamber of Commerce gave it to me. Yeah. Read what it says on the back. In appreciation of a great athlete. That's me. <laughs> I say, darling. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? Let me wear it for a little while, will you? Sure. Oh, and what a lovely ring. It is a beauty, isn't it? Stunning. Look, it just fits. To you. To you. That's the best dance what I was catching. You know it? That's the first time I've danced in about ten years. Oh, <laughs> you dance like you dance every day. Though you couldn't oh. fool me. Oh, I forgot to tell you, dear. I got an prize for you. Oh, and such prize. My dear chap, I seem to be in your way. I beg your pardon. Pardon me, ladies, please. Hey, you know that's Jim Dolan, the Pittsburgh pitcher. Yes, it's right. Of course. Um, will you please excuse me? I'll go and find a waiter. He shouldn't disappoint us with this surprise. Mm, would you come right back? Oh, sure I would. You, you, you eat your cherries. Where's Jim? It's none of your business. Well, it is my business, and I want to know where he is. I came here to tell him. Oh, to... beat it. You give me a pain. Listen, lady, I'm going to give you pain for you and never expect him in your life. Now, you tell me where he is. No, I won't. You get out of here. I won't get out of here. You're terrible people. You, you're you making a terrible thing for my boy like that. He's the best bitch you... Get out of here. Now, listen, lady. I'm telling you something. You vampire, you just... No, you keep your hands to you. Me. I'll stand for so much in that call. Now, listen. Don't you? Please don't hey, let him insult me. What's going on here? Oh, listen, Jim, I came to tell you. Listen, listen, you can't tell me nothing till you apologize to her. I won't apologize to her because she's no good for you. Now, get out of here. Go on, get out. <laughs> you wonderful boy. You do love me, don't you? You bet I do. That's for you, Harry. Well, thank you, Mr. Dolan. Thanks a lot, darling. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Come on, honey, let's get out of here. The bottle's all empty. Let's go to the casino club and have a drink, huh? Okay with me. Oh, was this your surprise? Yes, uh, did you like it? I've been waiting since you came back to make a wish. Hmm. Well, I guess you're going to get your wish, all right. Oh, I do. You darling. <gasps> well, what's the matter? Oh, I, I, I don't know. I don't Tell feel so good tonight. I think good. maybe better we go home, huh? Oh, all right, if you want to. Don't Wait a please. Uh, look, would you please wrap this up? We're going to take it home. Yes, sir. It'll be in the check room. May good fortune smile. God right. bless you. And heaven keep you from all harm. Bring you back into my arms. With your tender little son. Of your childhood. You are all that I possess. Every bit of Mom, what's the matter, dear? You're all I have in life. My son. I guess I'm a little tired. Well, sure, dear. Then we'll go home. Of course. We've got lots of nights to do this, you know. Come on, sweetheart. That's fine. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> Benny! Benny! Hello, Cookie. Cookie, dear. I came to explaining everything. Oh, don't do that. Look now. Oh, I could be explaining everything in a nutshell. Oh, go tell it to your sweetheart. <laughs> oh, believe me, Cookie. I ain't got no sweetheart excepting you. I wouldn't do time you one time or even not time. Oh, the way! I hate you! Hello, Jim. I'm sorry about last night. Oh, forget it. Don't be a fuss fuss. I must have been out of my head. Can you ever forgive me? Me? Don't be a fool. Everything goes with me. But look, what's going to happen with your grandmother? My grandmother? Sure, she came last night. And yesterday was her birthday. Yeah, but, but I told her that uh, you're in Philadelphia. Mr. McGrew sent you there on business. 
She thinks I'm there now? Yeah, but you can maybe tell her, like, uh, you got a wire in the train to come back. See? This is the first time I've ever had to tell her a lie. <laughs> I told her enough lies last night for the both of us. Now, look, here's the best thing you can do. Go over and see her. Have a talk with her. She's in room um, 273. Now, come on. Well, come on, make it snappy. Hmm. I've certainly been an awful fool. Yes, Jim. I mean, no, you ain't. Oh, yes, I have. All right. Elaine was right. When I get to the point of neglecting my grandmother and taking a sock at my best friend, then it's time for me to take stock of myself and find out just what's the matter with me. Say, will you call Maisie up at court 1625? Now, what do you want with her? I'm going to tell her that she and I are through. We're all washed up. Oh, that's a pleasure. <clears throat> Court, 1625. Yes, well, yes, thank you. Now you're catching yourself a hunk of sense. Because, hello, uh, Miss Maisie Simpson, please. Simpson, yes. Is that right? Oh, all right, thank you. Th yes, that's all, thank you very much. She checked out from the hotel and she didn't left no forwarding address. Well, that suits me. Yes, I hope somebody shoots her. Have you seen my wristwatch? No. Yes, sir. Clean as a whistle. By now, the money is spent, the ring is in the pawn shop, and you can't even tell what time it is. Ah, oh, Jim, I knew the minute I looked at that girl that she was a gold miner. I beg your pardon. Why, I not made a mistake. I must be in the wrong compartment. That doesn't matter. Won't you sit down? Thank you, Mr. Kelsey. How do you know my name? Everybody knows you. Quite right. Are you a patron of the theater? Sometimes. Sometimes. I never miss a show if I know you're going to be in the cast. Yes, I have quite a following. <clears throat> uh, Jim, if uh, your grandmother thanks you for a birthday present, a letter, uh, tell her she's welcome. What do you mean? I mean, uh, Tell her she's welcome. I'm ashamed of myself. Oh, don't be crazy. Don't keep on all the time. Is this true? Why, what? Why, this newspaper article, of course. Jim Dolan. Erstwhile pitching star was a central figure last night in a speakeasy brawl. And although he used his first to good advantage, 
for one in his evident state of intoxication. It is doubtful that his pugilistic accomplishments will reflect any credit on the baseball club that pays his salary or the league of which it is a member. Well, how about it? I'm afraid it's true. That's the finish. Mr. McGrew, I'm awfully sorry. Now, I understood you're just about everything from you, but no more. You're suspended indefinitely. Mein lieber Bruder, es ist mein Plaisir zu präsenten zu dir. Speak English, Papa. <coughs> As chairman of this committee, it gives me such a happiness to present to you a token of our esteem. Oh, thank you very much. How can I speak when you get me all flubberbusted? <laughs> but I do want to say that I thank you to the highest degree, to the largest extension, and to the biggest capacity. And I will be thinking of you all in the world's seriousness to nothing home runs every chance that I'm catching. Well, Mr. McGrew is waiting for me. I wish I could stay in longer. Hoping you remain the same, I'm saying goodbye to you one and all, and all in one, and goodbye, and thank you. Word. Hello, Sludge. Oh, gee, I'm glad to see you. Look what the different people gave to me. A beautiful watch with an unbreakable crystal. Gold, 14 carriage. Oh, what kind of a crystal? An unbreakable. It wouldn't bust. <gasps> you broke my unbreakable crystal. <laughs> oh! Yes, come in. Hello, Goldberg. Hello, Mr. McGrew. You played a great game today, and I'm proud of you. Thank you very much. What's on your mind? Um, I want to ask a little favor of you, please. Shoot. W why don't you let Jim pitch tomorrow? You know, I know him better than anybody else, and I'm positive what he learned his lesson. I think he has to. And he took his medicine like a man. Then you're going to let him pitch? I'm going to use him as my ace in the hole tomorrow. <laughs> Could I tell him now? Sure. I could? Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Jim. Jimmy. Jimmy, boy. Running away? You don't understand. Oh, yes, I do. There's only one answer. You're yellow. Oh, no, I'm not. 
It's the booing and, and the jeering. Why, it's driving me mad. And you're trying to run away from it. You can't do that. Why, it'd be on your conscience the rest of your life. I know. But I'm nothing but a flop. I know how you feel. But you can't run away. Think of your grandmother. She'd never say anything to you about it. But just the same. You know it would break her heart. You're right. I never forgive myself. Thanks. What do you mean, thanks? Don't be silly. Gee, you're a peach. I'm going to make good if, if they boo me for the next ten years. Now you're talking like a regular fellow. And if I do make good... Forget the years. Make good before you start planning what will happen after that. I left the note upstairs for Benny. I'll run up and get it before he gets it. Peoria, Moline, Rock Island, Davenport, West Liberty, St. Louis, track 27, 27 to the right. To the right. Track 27 to the right. 27 to the right. Englewood, Peoria, Moline, Rock Island, Davenport, West Liberty. All aboard! Englewood, please. Where's the ticket to Englewood? The last thing for Englewood's gone. But I got a ticket. I got to go on Englewood. How am I getting down there? The only way you can get to Englewood now is to take an aeroplane. I hear... I hear it. Englewood, Jerry. I got a ticket. Where are you getting the heron plane? At the airport. Oh, yes. Didn't you? Hello. 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 Has anything been seen of Goldberg yet? Uh, not yet, Mr. McGrew. You're welcome. When did you see him last? About, about six o'clock. He hurried through the lobby. Thank you. Do you any good to cry? Jim will find him. <laughs> I didn't know he committed suicide because I was mad at him. <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't. No news of him any place. <laughs>
Have you heard anything about Gold Boy yet? Well, the last I heard... Yeah? He was leading the league in hitting. You ought to be glad he's gone. Yeah, I... Oh, but I ain't gonna have anybody to fight with no more. That's the way these guys are... speaking, Benny Goldberg has disappeared. <laughs> We're afraid someone might have tried to put him out of the way on account of the final game tomorrow. All right, I'll put some men on it right away. <laughs> Thank you. And I was going to make up with him tomorrow. Oh, it's the worst trip I ever made. I don't mind it. Looks like Dolan's about shot. I guess the whole team's on the... Broadcasting the final game of the World Series. There is no news of Benny Goldberg, and the morale of the Pittsburgh team is badly shattered. As you all know, folks, Benny Goldberg, the popular catcher for Pittsburgh, mysteriously disappeared from his hotel last night, and uh, there's Dolan winding up again. Alfred Walk, forcing in a run for Cincinnati. The score now stands Cincinnati 4, Pittsburgh 3. Looks like Dolan is going to be taken out. Yes, sir, there's McGrew calling him now. I realize, Mr. McGrew, but I'm all broken up. Oh, come on, Jim, come on, buck up. We all feel as bad as you do about it. Come, come on, play ball! Yes, sir. Go on, right. now. Come on, Jim. All right, Jim. 
dugout. There seems to be a lot of excitement. It's Goldberg, folks. Penny Goldberg. His team makes the groups about him excitedly, and the fans are giving him a tremendous ovation. Goldberg's face is bandaged. It looks as though he's been in an accident. But he's in uniform, and apparently ready to get behind the pig and catch for his old sidekick, Jim Dolan. Mr. McGill, let me go in and catch him. I can catch with Jim better than anybody oh. else. Oh, come on. I'm all right. Out of sight. All right. Get behind the plate. Come on, Jim. <laughs> Broadcasting the final game of the World Series. It's the last half of the ninth inning, folks, and it's Pittsburgh's one chance to win the series. The boys have stepped up a lot since Benny Goldberg showed up, but they've still got a big order to fill. The score is four to three in favor of Cincinnati. There goes Goldberg up to the plate, and if he's got any hits in that old bat, he'd better bring them out now. Ah! Come on, you! Give me your best one to bat.
gives the final game in series to Pittsburgh. The final score is Pittsburgh 5, Cincinnati 4. <laughs> Please. Hey, Goldboy, please, guys, Sludge, will you please go by the horse? 